geography. Just use a sat nav. Right girls, today the plan is to make a big sign for the diary room. So when the girls are in there, it's going to look exciting and vibrant. Lots of bright colours and interesting things to look at in the background. Hi! Hi! We're all year sevens. When you first come into the school, it's like a quite big. I come to Glenmore and I was here at the beginning of year seven and I've been here all through till halfway through year nine now. And I think you should come, it has really good um, experiences for all the years. We're in year 11, <laughs> we're in year 11, we're going to leave, it's going to be so sad. It's <laughs> such good memories together. I love science. We love science! Okay then ladies, what we have here is we're going to imitate a chip bam fire at home. You can see all the smoke coming up, what might happen to it if it gets really, really hot? What would you do if your chip pan gets too hot and bursts into flames? <laughs> would you recommend using water to put out a chip pan? Yeah. I'm so glad you have said that. A nice damp towel. Okay. Uh, Friday. So, um, one, two things from me this morning. And um, just first of all, uh, Helen, how's the working experience going? Yeah. And we've come through now. Have you followed those girls yourself? Absolutely. They've been absolutely brilliant. Uh, we asked them to help us when they came, and they have. And they're going to leave here with the best exam results that anybody's ever had in the history of the school. Uh, we're leaving this year, but I really liked the teachers in the room because they're all really helpful. I like the fact that our year two play. I like the respect that the teachers have for the children and the, te and the children have for the teachers. Um, I love the lessons and they give me like, a really good opportunity for A-level with all the varieties of the class. I like how they're really helpful and they help you with what you want to do in life. Thank you, Emma. Bye! <laughs> Did you get a bit of footage on the cycling? On, on the, the high ropes, rather. Yeah. Did, was that good? The idea uh, to bring the girls here is to give them a bit of confidence. One of the biggest things that really stops young people from making the sort of progress that you want them to make is lacking in confidence, lacking in self-belief. So the idea is we bring them here to the Perfex, they do some work on the high ropes, gives them that little bit of confidence, even if they take that one step a little bit further than they perhaps would have felt, com felt, felt comfortable doing. Um, just gives them that little bit of confidence and perhaps maybe it'll, um, it'll be something that they can take forward into their studies and so on as well. Well considering I'm petrified of heights, I didn't really want to do it, but and then I thought, well I kind of had to, otherwise I'd be really annoyed with myself if I didn't. I felt really well supported. They're, they're really getting on well with it and there's there's a few girls who have got a lot of confidence. They're 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 helping the girls with perhaps less who are left less confident. Uh, before I wasn't sure but now I feel very confident. One of the things that we do, we stop off at the beach on the way back. Uh, we do a bit of maths at the beach on the, on the way back from the centre. Um, obviously chatting about the sort of things that they've learned and the sort of things that they've picked up. My experience of doing this with, with the girls over the last year or so has been that it has given them a, a sort of team spirit amongst them and they, they do sort of feel bonded with each other and they do sort of encourage each other when, when they're back in school and so on as well. Well we started the outdoor learning and camping about a year ago. Um, the reason is we've made a step change in academic achievement in the school. And really, we needed to think about what was going to be the next big thing to take us to that next stage. We're going to the Year 9 camping trip. It's going to be really fun. We're going mountain biking and kayaking. Have you been before? 
No, so it's a new experience and it's going to be really fun and we're looking forward to it because we're with all our friends. We've taken a year of Group 9 girls for the weekend camping. We are off to the uh, Herbex near Cove Castle. We toast marshmallows, we tell a few stories, ghost stories. We've got a ukulele, we're going to play some songs and uh, hopefully we're going to give them a few challenging activities that they're going to thrive on. Uh, we hired Mr. Westner, who used to work for local authorities in environmental education. Uh, and he's now set about building a program for all the girls uh, and reintroduced uh, Duke of Edinburgh and a new scheme called Trailblazers, which all the girls will be taking part in, which involves camping, cycling, canoeing. The girls love working outside and doing practical things because often girls are excluded from that at home. Uh, and so we resolved to build a garden. Girls, today we're going to plant some tomato seeds ready to put in our polytunnel. By selling the produce, they have enough money to buy the seeds for next year so the garden doesn't cost the school any money. Okay, so I've got some lettuce now. I'm just going to pull up some radishes and then we're going to take those to the canteen where they'll be hopefully made into a salad and the girls can have those for lunch. But we could also hopefully have a shop and sell some of the produce at the end of the day so the garden becomes sustainable and they understand the value of their own food. Okay, so you remember three weeks ago, planted your tomato seeds out on the benches. They're watered, they've grown, and they're now ready to plant in the polytunnel to plant out because they, they need a new space. Uh, before we came out here we were listening to a piece of music and they were writing down any images that they came up with, they were writing down similes and metaphors for it um, and they were using their imaginations to portray the music to someone else and then we decided to come outside into this outdoor classroom and look at touch, um, hearing, smell and sight just on the outside so they're going around and they're touching everything and they're writing down what they've touched Brown bench, scary owl. And then a description, either an adjective or a simile, or just something to make it a bit more interesting. And then we'll go inside and we'll write some sentences. One times two is seven! No! Oh, well, Mr. Reed's an outstanding maths teacher, as well as being an assistant head teacher in the school. Uh, and the girls all know that he's prepared to go any distance he has to do to help them get their passes. How many metres is that? What do you have to do? Uh, at the moment, he's spending every, all day, every day, helping Year 11 prepare for the GCSE exams. Uh, and the girls are very grateful. Yeah, it's different from primary school because you didn't get to do woodwork and stuff like this. And um, there's some boxes over there. Uh, we made a clock box. Cl clocks. Real clocks? Yeah, yeah. And they work. What with the cans on it? Yeah, time painting and shapes and everything. Yeah. Um, well, we used the lathe. We had to use a chisel. <laughs> We've had some girls who clearly have worked with wood before, maybe in Grandad's shed, or the dad might be a carpenter and so on, and they tend to be much more practical minded and they can produce some fantastic pieces of work. Yeah, we had one girl produce a little jewellery stroke treasure box with little drawers and secret compartments in and everything. Um, you know, absolutely delighted, fantastic piece of work. Uh, normally in the classroom here in DT, there's no more than 20 pupils. And are you able to keep an eye on towards pupils in an environment that possibly has risk assessment or risk? Yeah, yeah. Health and safety is one of the things that we really focus on quite heavily. Um, 
and none of the girls use any tools or equipment without proper training first. Tell me about what the core curriculum still is. Uh, well, the core curriculum is much the same. It's the way we're delivering it that we are hoping to, to amend. But we're focused here on academic results for our girls to make sure they have a happy, successful adult life. And so the focus is very much still on English, maths, science, languages, IT, all the core skills that they're going to need in adult life. We've put more than 20% now on our 5A start to see, including English and Maths figure, and we're set for a further rise this summer. I 
because um, sort of the technical um, stuff that they do there. Um, so without them, I wouldn't have been able to learn what I've learned so far, or had the like option or help to go to college. And do it, so, yeah. This isn't going to be the last time I'm going to be going to Glamour. I'm going to be going back and visiting and seeing how all the teachers and other pupils are getting on. Like, I, it's not the end of Glenmore. I'm not going to just completely forget about it at all. Yeah, I've spoken to people from the year above me who have gone to different schools and they said that they just miss Glenmore and it's nothing like Glenmore and how like Glenmore has set them up for what they're expecting but they just still miss what it used to be. I'd just like to say thank you to everyone at Glenmore, all the teachers that have helped me and all the pupils that have been so supportive and good luck to all the other girls that are in Glenmore and teachers carry on doing what you're doing. The current year 11 is the smallest year group, they're the ones you first met, they were here when we were least popular, uh, but now the school is uh, effectively full uh, and with lots and lots of first choice people. If they want the child to come to Glenmore, the best thing they can do is put us down as first choice uh, and that will get them into the school. If they do choose other options, then I can't guarantee that.